Welcome to RoboSquid TV. I'm Kyle, and together we're going to make beautiful websites. Welcome back if you've been following our web school playlist, and welcome back new devs. Today we're going to learn the new CSS layout mode Flexbox, which is going to help us make beautiful and responsive websites that will automatically adapt to any size screen. This episode was made possible by Hover.com. After you build your next website and want to share it with the world, use Hover.com's intelligent search tool to find the perfect domain name with hundreds of extensions to choose from. Get 10% off your own custom domain name or email and support the channel by going to Hover.com forward slash RoboSquidTV. And with that, let's get started. Flexbox is a new layout mode for designing our websites and web components. Where Flexbox shines is it was designed with responsiveness in mind and the ability to adapt to situations where maybe we don't know how many items are on a page or how large they will be, such as with dynamic web applications. And don't worry, we'll get there in a future video. So what is a layout mode? When your web browser goes to render your page and turn the HTML into something that will be drawn on the screen, it has to calculate where those elements will be placed, how big they will be, and how they will interact with each other. Up until now, we've been dealing with block layouts which required us to use floats if we wanted to create multi-column designs. If you're new to web development and have never used floats before, good, don't worry about it. Flexbox killed them. Now, floating elements will probably be around for a while because it's supported by old web browsers, which is something that certain companies are interested in, uh, depending on who will be visiting their website. You could use Flexbox and float side by side, However, most web browsers have at least a few years of solid support for Flexbox. This alternate layout method changes how the HTML is rendered to the screen. Here's the idea. You have a container whose display value is set to flex. Any immediate children inside of this container automatically become flex items. The flex container and flex items have new CSS properties that let us define how we want our content to display. Let's talk about the flex container. The flex container is any element whose display property has been set to flex. This could be any container element like div or main or even just the body element itself if you plan to make a whole page layout around Flexbox. Quick side note, you may be ahead of the curve and have heard about CSS grid layouts. Well, we'll get to that in another video, but just as a heads up, technically CSS grid layouts are more efficient for laying out whole web pages, where Flexbox is more designed to create smaller components. But if your website is simple enough, Flexbox will work fine for us. The Flexbox container has a main access and a direction. Flex items will align themselves from start to the end of that access. By default, the Flexbox container has a flex direction of row. This means that the flex items will align themselves similarly to inline blocks. With the flex direction set to row, the main axis of the flex container is horizontal, with flex start being at the left edge and flex end being at the right. What's amazing with Flexbox is we can rotate this axis so that it is vertical, setting the flex direction to column, and then you'll see the elements behave more like block elements. And it's worth noting here that the flex start would be at the top and the flex end would be at the bottom in this configuration. We also have the reverse of each, which is just reordering the items in the reverse. If you're new to web design, it's hard to appreciate how amazing this is that you're able to do this with just CSS and it gets better. What we have here is an example of three flex items in our flex container with a minimum width set to 300 pixels. If we keep adding more flex items, they will eventually spill out of their container. If we add flex wrap with flex wrap wrap, the items will automatically flow onto the next line. We can also set this to no wrap or wrap reverse. So your flex container can either be a single line container or a multi-line container, depending on how you use flex wrap. And the last three major properties of the flex container have to do with how we want to position these items and lines inside of our flex container. The justify content property will shift your items along the main axis of the flex box where there is extra space between the items. By default, your content will be justified to the flex start. You can also set it to the flex end to move it to the opposite side or center it. You can also set justify content to space between, which will evenly distribute the extra space between the items with the first item being at the start and the last item being at the end. Or you can do space around, which will evenly divide the space around each item. Remember that this is relative to the axis of the flex box. 
So if your direction is set to column, the flex start is at the top and the flex end is at the bottom. Next we have the align items property. Align items is similar to justify content, but it applies to the opposite axis of the current line. If in a row, our justify content property moves items left and right, then align items moves our items up and down. We still have flex start, flex end, and center, as well as baseline, which will keep the baseline of our items aligned no matter what the height of the items. And we have stretch, which will fill the available space. And finally, lastly for Flexbox container is align content, which applies to multi-line Flexbox containers and will distribute the lines of the flex container. The default of which is stretch, which makes the lines fill the container. We also have flex start, flex end, and center, as well as space between and space around. And now to help you, I've made an oversimplified example on CodePen of a single line Flexbox container with three items. You can of course see the source code. Play with the CSS options and see how Flexbox works in action. For instance, if we want to horizontally and vertically center these items, all we need to do is both justify content and align items to center. This is something that has been extremely difficult in the past with CSS alone. Okay, now you know the flex container. We have one last thing to go over before getting to the fun stuff and making real websites, and that is the flex items. Flex items themselves gain new CSS properties just for flex items that will give us a few more options, such as order, which will allow us to change the order for Flexbox items outside of just being able to reverse the row. Before we were showing the items inside the container with fixed width values, but what's cool about Flexbox is the ability to calculate the widths for us dynamically. The flex property is shorthand and takes three values, flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis. You could write these all out as separate properties, but it's recommended that you do it this way. And I know that might have sounded a little complicated, but stick with me for a second. Okay, what am I even talking about? Flex grow sets the item to grow and fill all the available space on the line. If every item has a flex grow of one, then each item will evenly grow to fill the space between them. If you were to set one item to two, then it would attempt to take up twice as much of the space available as the other items. Flex shrink will allow items to shrink if needed, and flex basis is set to auto by default, which is actually sort of a replacement to setting the width of your item. Let me explain, but auto is fine most of the time. When you set flex basis as opposed to width, you are telling Flexbox, this is the width that I would most like to have when possible, before your item is placed in the Flexbox. I say before the item is placed in the flex box because as soon as it is, that flex basis width that you set is not necessarily the one you are going to get. If your flex basis would originally make your items too large to fit in the container, but you have a flex shrink enabled, the items will resize. Same thing if your baseline would leave you with extra space, but you have flex grow enabled, then the items would grow to fit. Setting our flex value to just one will set the flex grow to one, flex shrink is set to one automatically, and flex basis is set to auto by default. Let's put some of this into practice. We'll start up a new document and link our style sheet and add some markup. We want to add a main element and an aside. Inside of our main, I'm going to add a few dummy articles just to fill up some space. And in the aside, I'm just gonna write the word aside. Now onto the CSS. The first thing we wanna do is a light CSS reset which we went in depth about in our last video. I just wanna do a quick and dirty CSS reset, so I'll grab the HTML and body elements and set their margin to zero and their heights to 100%. Okay, in this example, we're gonna make the body element of our page our flex container, so select the body and add a display of flex. Now what we are aiming for is a two column layout designed for the main element to take up 80% of the page. We can do that by setting our flex properties. We said before that this property will act as a ratio of space an item will take up on the line. So what I'm looking for is a four to one ratio. I'll give my main a flex of four and the aside flex of one. This gives us the layout that we want on our desktop. And if we shrink our screen, the page even scales for us. However, when it gets to a certain point, I think it would be best if the aside dropped down onto the next line for mobile. The easiest way to solve this problem is to simply change the flex direction on a media query. Really quick, if you aren't familiar with the CSS media query, it's a block of CSS that is only applied when a certain condition you set is equal to true. So for instance, for us, if we write at media, and then after a space in parentheses, we write our condition for the screen size, I'll write max width 800 pixels. 
Then we add our opening and closing curly braces, and any CSS written in this block will only apply when the screen size is less than 800 pixels wide. And in here, we can set the flex direction of our body to column, and the flex box will orientate itself so that the aside will render on the bottom. And here's the website when we view it on a cell phone. All right, guys, that is Flexbox for CSS. We're going to be using it a lot in the near future and be creating some amazing websites. And when you do make your amazing websites, you're going to need a great domain name so you can share that website with the world. Hover.com's minimalist intelligent search tool will help you find a great domain name for your website. Simply enter a keyword and let Hover.com find the perfect domain name with hundreds of cool extensions available to choose from. And even if you're not building your own website, you can easily connect your domain name to tons of services such as Shopify, and in just a few clicks, get your business online and started. You can even connect your new domain name to a custom email address for just $5 a year. And if you need any help, call their amazing support team and you'll get connected right to a real human right away ready to help. Support the show and get 10% off your own custom domain name or email by going to hover.com forward slash RoboSquidTV. Thanks for watching again. If you're still here with me, I am first of all shocked, but also thankful. Thank you for helping me. I hope this has been educational for you guys. And if you need any more, of course, you can always subscribe, follow on Twitter, and of course, like us on Facebook. All the links are in the description, and I'll see you real soon.